वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला हाई आई एम जैरा शापीवाला फ्रॉम विरासत हिंद फाउंडेशन अंडर द पेपर आर्ट एंड आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ इंडिया टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द चंडेला स्कूल ऑफ टेम्पल आर्किटेक्चर इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द नगरा स्कूल ऑफ टेम्पल आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ विच द खजराहो ग्रुप ऑफ टेम्पल्स आर द बेस्ट एग्जाम्पल्स एंड वेरियस फीचर्स The Chandelas were a royal dynasty that ruled the Jija Bhukti region which is now the present day Bundelkhand region of north central India between the 9th and 13th century CE. Initially the Chandelas ruled as feudatories of the Gurjara Pratihara kings from Manyagarh a hill fort located about 19 kilometers from Khajuraho. they gradually grew in power and emerged as one of the most important dynasties of central india from 10th century ce starting with the rule of yashovarman followed by danga kanda vidyadhara jeja bhukti was transformed into a great center of cultural and artistic movement the chandelas filled their kingdom with forts palaces tanks and temples at various places such as mahoba एंशियंट महो सावन नगरा कलेंजार एंशियंट कलंजरा अजयगर एंशियंट जयपुर दुर्गा द फोर्ट एट अजयगर रिमेन्स एंड ऑल्सो द अदर प्लेसेस दे आर ब्यूटिफुल रूइंस बट इट वॉज एट खजुराहो द कल्चरल कैपिटल द डायनेस्टी रीच इट्स जेनत इन आर्किटेक्चरल एंड स्कल्पचर एक्सीलेंस दैट इज फ्रॉम यशोवर्मन accepted the suzerainty of the gurjara pratihara but from the second king onwards right from danga the dynasty was ruling independently 9th and 10th centuries witnessed a spurt in temple building in the classical nagara or north indian temple architectural style in their brief period of 4 centuries in the khajuraho group of temples they left a legacy that cannot be overlooked nagara school of temple architecture in the nagara style of temple architecture that became popular in the north and central india the temples have two distinct features one is that the plan is square with a number of graduated projections or rathas in the middle of each side giving a cruciform shape with a number of re-entrant angles on every side in elevation a shikhara tower gradually inclined inwards in a convex curve using concentric rotating squares and circles principle thus there is a strong emphasis on lines in elevation The temples built between the 7th and 14th century CE in the Nagara style had mandapas pavilions. The Nagara style is widely distributed over a great part of India exhibiting distinct regional varieties. That is why the Khajuraho group of temples are known as the Chandela group of temples. Then we have the um the Osian style, the Kalinga style, then we have the himalayan style which is again very distinct but they all are broadly classified as the nagara school of temple architecture the nagara temples are sandhara and niradhara the only difference being that the sandhara temples have a square sanctum sanctorum enclosed by pillars and there is a path for circumambulation while in the niradhara temples these features don't exist the nagara school of temple architecture began in the gupta era and the basic features that this uh, style of architecture or the temples display is that a cruciform base plan plan a curvy lineal shikara a garbagriha sanctum sanctorum na mandap that acts as an entrance porch okay now within this you have the in interior entrances which are also called the vestibule or the antrala and the mahamandapa what is this cruciform base plan 
it is very simple the base is square in plan and the projections from either side if they are given that is if you have one projection on either side it makes it have three sanctums so it becomes three ratha if you have two projections on either side it becomes five projections in total so a pancharata in the very similar way it if it is three it becomes saptaratha seven projections if it is four it becomes the navaratha the navaratha plan so that is the maximum uh, the navaratha so this is how the base form works the shikara as already explained is convex in shape and leans inward side just before the ripped slab of stone that we place on top which is called the uh, amalaka the mandap is generally again square in plan with a pyramidal shaped roof ornamented in various ways in various sub styles like in the khajuraho group of temples you have the uru shringas that is the smaller shrines both on the shikhar sometimes even on the mandap khajuraho was earlier known as khajuri vahaka and is situated in a valley surrounded by hills on all side the terrain is rugged and difficult for agricultural activities and even the rainfall is quite scanty there is only a seasonal runnel or a river flowing by called khudra though this is not exactly a place that anybody would choose for any major activity and yet the chandelas chose it to be their capital for the simple reason that it offered excellent defense system against the invasion its terrain was not suitable for a war to be honest and the hills on both the sides provided natural defense in their times uh, when the chandelas were ruling it, it was an imposing city spread over 21 square kilometers and was dotted with more almost 85 temples out of which only 25 are extant ibn batuta the 14th century moroccan traveler refers to khajuraho as khajra the place with a great pond about a mile in length near which the temples containing idols that the muslims mutilated later khajuraho and its importance that is there in the country now was majorly due to the colonial discovery of khajuraho that is when it was discovered by the british rediscovered uh, one would say in 1838 a british army captain t s burt uh, found out that there was something there lying and when he went there searching looking for a temple he found a great group of temple in the jungles of khajuraho this is how but talks about the temples i found seven hindu temples most beautifully and exquisitely carved as to workmanship but the sculpture had at times allowed his subject to grow a little warmer then there was any absolute necessity for its doing indeed some of the sculptures here were extremely indecent and offensive the palki bearers however appeared to take great delight at those to them very agreeable novelties which they took care to point out to all present he further said probably the finest aggregate number of temples congregated in one place to meet within all of india in 1952 fc macy prepared this drawing which is considered as one of the earliest pencil drawing of the architectural details of the khajuraho group of temples in the same year major general alexander cunningham of archaeological survey of india produced detailed plans of khajuraho as seen here in the slide drawing the distinction between the western and the eastern group of temples cunningham thought all the sculptures of khajuraho as highly indecent and most of the time disgustingly obscene this 
represents the western view of indian ethos photograph that you see here is one of the earliest photograph taken of the khajuraho group of temples by joseph david beglor in the year 1871 72 the temples of khajuraho represent the culmination of central indian temple architecture they are not very large they are actually very small in size and they don't have an enclosure wall and are erected on high platforms these platform or the plinth is called the jagati the jagati elevates the structure from its environs and provides an open ambulatory around the temple a matured temple of the nagara style or let's say here the khajuraho style will have these following uh, main elements the ardha mandapa or the entrance porch mandapa or hall antarala or the vestibule garbhagriha or the sanctum sanctorum all the four components are connected both internally as well as externally and are planned along an axis running east to west in the larger temples one can observe added balconied windows to the mandapa and in a ambulatory around the sanctum the antarala mandapas have two balconied windows for ventilation some of the larger temples also have subsidiary shrines on the four corners of the platform constituting the panchayatana style a matured khajuraho temple is erected on a lofty platform terrace which consists of a series of ornamental bands over this ornate base stands the janga or wall of the temple the balcony windows on the janga allow light and air into the interior the solid space of the janga is studded with two or three horizontal bands where we find most of the beautiful sculptures of the khajuraho group of temples above the central zone of the janga is the shikhara consisting of a series of graded peaks that resemble a mountain range often kailash or meru the two cosmic mountains of hindu mythology and that is why many of the temp uh, the shikra style of temples of the nagara school of temple architecture are also known as the mairu sheli these peaks arranged along the vertical axis rise and fall alternatively while ma maintaining the upward ascent and culminate in the tallest spire or shikara which is raised directly over the sanctum unlike the garbhagriha the mandapa and the maha mandapa are of pyramidal shape in uh, the entrance porch a modest oblong passage is entered through a, a makara torana makara here is alligator the passage gradually broadens into a wider mandapa which is open on three sides the roof of the mandapa is carried on dwarf pillars and pilasters the maha mandapa is closed hall with balconied windows in the larger temples the maha mandapa has four central pillars and is connected with the sanctum which has an ornate entrance the interior of the temple shows remarkable decorative details on absolutely every pillar doorway architrave the cusp ceilings are carved with exclusive geometrical and floral designs yet another major attraction are bracket figures or apsaras and shalabanjikas yakshas and ganas with their sensuous postures and finish the apsaras are the masterpieces of Indian art in some major temples the facades of the sanctum sanctorum also show two or three bands of state chitri uh, similar to central part of the outer surface but on a smaller scale most of the khajuraho group uh, temples are built with finely grained sandstone in varying shades of buff pink or yellow these were mined from the quarries of panna on the eastern bank of ken river exceptions uh, to this rule are the temples of the chosat yogini brahma and the lal gua mahadeva as they are built from granite the sculptures of the khajuraho group of temples can be divided into five broad categories they are the kalp kalti images the peripheral deities 
the apsaras or the surasundaris secular scenes and the mythical beasts the cult images include sculptures of the mainstream hindu gods and goddesses as carved per their canonical formula that is whatever the iconographic text reveal uh, they are completely round bearing specific ornaments weapons symbols the mainstream hindu gods and goddesses are accompanied by peripheral deities or the paraswa devtas and are free from iconographic dictation that is they don't have a very strict uh, portrayal they occur in niches and are executed either in round high or medium relief they also appear less formal and are distinguishing uh, look almost human you can say and uh, can be distinguished as a separate entity only because of their peculiar headgears or their mounds or other attributes apsaras or surasundaris are the third category of sculptures in the khajuraho temples they are amongst the finest and found in the highest concentration they are executed in round high and in medium relief on both the inner and outer walls pillars brackets and ceilings the surasundaris according to shilpa prakash a treatise on the architecture of temples called them as the ornament without which the temples would be inferior in their look as well as feel so these divinities are basically dancers and attendants of higher divinities and they are attired in finest ornaments and garments they represent uh, they are represented with folded hands carrying a lotus flower looking at the mirror holding water jars basically in very different poses in different moods and uh, most popular representations would be yawning scratching their back rinsing water removing thorn from the feet fondling babies fondling their breasts uh, playing with monkeys parrots writing letters um, playing musical instruments in fact it is very interesting to note that where they have been given a major importance the shilpa prakash is a treatise that was developed uh, when the tantric tantrism was at its peak so many associate the erotic carvings on the walls of the khajuraho temple as a in correlation with that uh, sect which believed in uh, you know having sex as a method to reach nirvana secular images from the fourth categories Uh, which includes domestic scenes teachers pupils musicians dancers and also the mithuna sculptures that is the erotic couples the erotic art of khajuraho is one of the most spectacular expressions of intense human romance the various interpretations of these sculptures though the compositions vibrate with rare sensitivity and warmth of emotion they are not just uh, standing there expressionless they they display a lot of human emotions most uh, this clearly reflects Uh, the stands that hindus in the medieval age had towards sex and its place in the scheme of life kama or the pursuit of pleasure was considered as one of the four purusharths or the aims of life and was regarded as the most essential and indispensable indispensable stepping stone to ach- achieving moksha and everything that uh, Uh, the hindus did was basically to break the cycle of birth and rebirth and attain moksha one of the ways of attaining moksha was to live a full life a full life which was uh, had its own stages and sex was definitely a part of that it was not looked down upon it was not a taboo the last category of sculptures consists of the mythical beasts or animals the most popular being the yali vyala or the sardula
consisting of a composite le leonine creature with the head of a tiger, elephant, bird, animal and it's frequently shown in combat with the humans. The erotica or the Mithuna couples that are sh uh, depicted on temple walls of many temples in our country, not just the Khajuraho, uh, have a very deep underlying philosophy. The philosophy behind the erotica is uh, pandering to Vedic philosophy. In Vedic times, uh, the, uh, the life was divided into uh, four purusharths, that is four life goals. And one of the life goals was uh, seeking pleasure or calm. Not just that, but uh, the temple walls also uh, they, uh, are analogous. If you enter the temple and walk from the uh, mandap to the garbhagriha, you leave all your worldly thoughts to enter a different realm of the divine, to seek uh, bliss, calm and many other things. Now when you are doing this physically, mentally also you are supposed to be doing this. Mentally you do this by leaving all thoughts of the material world behind you and these thoughts also include your thoughts of erotic that in nature so where the erotica that is carved on the temple walls depict that part which a human being needs to take towards achieving the moksha that is from the physical realm to the uh, divine realm and as I had already explained that there uh, during medieval era Tantrism was at its peak and in according to Tantrism sex is one of the methods by which one can attain moksha that is why the couples shown in the throes of passion on the sculpt, on the walls are depicting a transition from the physical to the spiritual world. They are just not there physically, but they are one in spirit. This uh, oneness or the unity of the body with the spirit or the human being taken to another level altogether. This is the philosophy that underlines the presence of erotica on almost all the temples of our country, whether more or less in number. It is not, and also the fact that they are called love temples depicts that uh, this is a physical form of showing love. Love is about emotions, love is about expressions, love is all about also the physicality of it which was not overlooked uh, in Indian con context and was very poetically described in various texts. Not as a vulgarity, not as something to be looked down upon, not as a taboo, but something that leads you to a higher purpose in life, something that leads you to having moksha, freedom from this cycle of birth and rebirth that we are continuously trying to break. The temples of Khajuraho fall in two broad categories, that is the later and the earlier and also the western group of temples and the eastern group of temples and the southern group of temples. This is the timeline of the temples when they were built exactly. In the western group of temples to the west of Khajuraho village are a cluster of temples that are amongst the best of the Chandela architecture. The western group uh, is considered the best. The western group of temples include the Kandarya Mahadev temple, the Lakshman temple, Vishwanath temple, Jagdambi temple, Chitragup temple and the Parvati and the Matangeshwara temple. Uh, Lakshman temple built between 930 and 950 CE by the Jandela king Yashovarman, the Lakshman temple is dedicated to Vaikuntha Vishnu. 
it is a sandara temple and of the panchayatna variety that means it has a, uh, not just the main sanctum sanctorum but even other four subsidiary shrines it is one of the earliest among the mature group of temples at khajuraho with all the principal elements that is the entrance porch mandapa mahamandapa with balconies vestibules sanctum and the ambulatory path with balconies the temple stands on a high jagati its shikara is clustered with minor shikaras uh, it has two rows of sculptures including divine figures the mithuna couples and basement molding show a bold elephant frieze the sculptures are noted for their sensuous grace reminiscent of the gupta tradition the sanctum doorway has seven vertical panels the central panel being decorated with the various incarnations of the vishnu the dashavatara the lintel depicts goddess lakshmi flanked by brahma vishnu and surmounted by two bold sculptured friezes of the navagraha the sanctum enshrines a three-headed four-armed image of vishnu as vaikuntha the central head being that of human while heads on either are that of a boar and a lion varaha and narsimha architecturally simple but built earlier than the lakshman temple that is in 900 between 900 and 925 ce the varaha temple is noteworthy for an enchanting colossal image of varaha the statue is 2.6 meters long and 1.7 meters high entirely made up of sandstone it is carved with numerous figures on its entire body the sculpture is carved between the nose and the mouth depicts the goddess saraswati dedicated to shiva the vishwanath temple built between 999 and 1002 ce was commissioned by the chandela king danga its architectural style is similar to the lakshman temple and the kandariya mahadev temple the temple was designed as a panchayatna complex however only two subsidiary shrines survive the sanctum has a stone linger surrounded by a passage for the parikrama and the temple wall has several niches with sculptures of the saptamatrikas parvati and a dancing ganesh the exterior portion above the base has three bands featuring apsaras mithunas and the mythical creatures the chitragupta temple is the only temple of khajuraho dedicated to surya or the sun god Built in 11th century CE the temple has a sanctum with an ambulatory path a vestibule a mahamandapa and an entrance porch the sanctum which is partly broken has a tall statue of surya riding a chariot of seven horses now this sculpture is very different and noteworthy because the sculpture shows surya dressed in an armored coat with boots and he is holding a lotus flower uh, against the standard iconography of surya the exterior wall of this temple has sculptures of erotic couples apsaras hindu divinities and uh, 11 headed vishnu built in between 1000 and 1025 ce the jagdambi temple is a shakti temple named after the idol of parvati enshrined in the sanctum however it was originally a vishnu temple and that is indicated by the prominence given to vishnu in the sanctum doorway the temple stands on a lofty platform beside the kandariya mahadev temple and bears a striking resemblance to the chitragupta temple among the sculptures the most noteworthy is the dignified sculpture of yama the god of death the largest and one of the most elegant temples of uh, of india is the kandariya mahadev temple of khajuraho built in 1030 ce by the chandela king vidyadhara the temple measures about 30.5 meters in length and 20 meters in width excluding the platform The grand shikara is decorated with an ascending series of 84 small re- replicas of itself. The Kandariya Mahadev is the most developed of North Indian temples consisting of all the features of a matured 
a Nagara style of temple. Its interior is more spacious when compared to the other temples of Khajuraho and it is the only temple of the series where the platform shows projections on its lateral sides and rears corresponding to the projection of the balconies. The temple also has the loftiest basement with ornamental mouldings including two rows of processional friezes teeming with elephants, horses, warriors, hunters, acrobats, musicians, dancers and erotic couples. Its Janga has three bands carved with some of the most beautiful sculptures of Khajuraho. The figures are slender, tall, and depict a variety of apsaras in lively postures. They, they represent the highest watermark of artistic excellence in Khajuraho. The eastern group of temples include the Brahma temple, the Vamana and the Zaveri temples. They also include three Jain temples, Gantai, Adinath and the Paraswanath temple. The Brahmanical temples are located near the Khajuraho Sagar, while the Jain temples are situated further south. The Brahma temple is the earliest in the series and is of a humble plan and design as you can see. The Shikara is made up of sandstone and the body of granite. It was originally a Vishnu temple. Except the doorway, the temple is devoid of sculptures, much unlike other temples of Khajuraho which are densely sculpted. The temple is dated to 900 CE. The Vamana temple is located at a distance of 200 meters to the northeast of the Brahma temple and is dated to 1050 CE. The temple is dedicated to Vamana or the dwarf incarnation of Vishnu without the ambulatory path. The temple is a Saptaratha with vestibule, Mahamandapa, balconies and an entrance porch. It stands on a high jagati, just like all the temples here. The shikara of the Vamana temple is not covered with miniature shikaras and instead is embellished with a fretwork of chaitya arches. There are, there are very few uh, erotic sculptures in this temple when compared to all the other temples. The Zaveri and the Gantai temples. The Zaveri temple is dedicated to Vishnu and situated 200 meters south of Vamana temple. It is small, well-proportioned Nirandara temple consisting of a sanctum, vestibule, mandapa and a portico. The Gantai temple uh, is called so because of the chain and bell motifs carved, carved on its tall elegant pillars. However, the temple is in ruins. Only the entrance porch and the Mahamandapa resting on the four pillars have survived. This Jain temple is dedicated to Jina Adinath in Khajuraho. Though smaller in size than Paraswanath temple, this temple has preserved some of the finest sculptures. The plan and design of the Adinath temple is similar to that of the Vaman temple. The principal niches on outer wall contain images of Jaina Yakshis and Apsaras. The external wall also depicts sculptures of Hindu deities. The southern group of temples. There are two prominent temples in the southern group, Duladeo and the Chaturbhuj. Duladeo is the youngest member of the Khajuraho group of temples. Dedicated to Shiva, it is a Nirandara temple and consists of a sanctum, vestibule, mahamandapa and the porch. In plan and design it has features that are common to all the developed medieval temples of Deccan and Western India. Its sculptures are less dynamic and appear stereotyped and overcrowded. It is dated to 1125 CE. This is the farthest temple and is situated about 3 kilometers south of Khajuraho. The Chaturbhuj temple is a Nirandara temple of modest size and the only temple without a single erotic sculpture in the entire group of temples at Khajuraho. The large image of a four-armed Vishnu enshrined in the sanctum, however, is remarkable for its expression of tremendous calm and bliss. In the history of temple architecture in India, the Chandelas have made a unique contribution in the form of the Khajuraho group of temples. The region where they ruled, that is the Jejabukti region, was already an established 
सेंटर ऑफ टेम्पल बिल्डिंग राइट फ्रॉम द गुप्ता पीरियड द नाचना कुटीर देवगढ़ भीतरगांव सांची एक्सेट्रा बींग एक्सेलेंट एग्जाम्पल्स इट वॉज ऑल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रीजन फॉर वेरियस रिलीजन्स हिंदूज बुद्धस द जैनाज दो द रीजन इज नॉट फर्टाइल वेन कम्पेयर टू द डेल्टा रीजन ऑफ द ईस्ट कोस्ट और द गुजरात प्लेन्स इट वॉज ट्रेड दैट ब्रॉड प्रोस्पेरिटी टू दिस रीजन The tem- temples were patronized by royal clans and also by merchants of the, the medieval era. Today, the temples of Khajuraho may be deserted and are not used, maybe regularly, and uh, have become a tourist hotspot. But one, if one looks at the salient features. of the temples if one looks at the sculptor sculptures of the temple the expressions that they have the kind of uh, abundance that is denoted in the sculpture one can imagine the kind of prosperity that the region saw within that short rule of four centuries of the chandilas thank you i hope you enjoyed this lecture for more information please refer the e text of this module